All right, class, so in this video, I'm going to talk through these different questions of the day. Um, I made a separate video for this question number four, so if you wanna check that out, I'll put a link um, for you here as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started for question number one. It says, as the strength of the intermolecular forces for a compound increases. So here we're talking about those compounds being more stuck together. So as those intermolecular forces are increasing, that means that they're gonna be more stuck together. We wanna to look at these different properties um, that will also be increasing. So the first one is the normal boiling point. So when I'm thinking about the normal boiling point, I'm thinking about, well, how easy are, is it gonna be for those molecules to separate from one another? So if my, if my hands are the different molecules, and they're gonna be you know, mixing around, and then one's gonna escape as a gas, right? Escape as a gas, that's gonna be the, the normal boiling point. So the normal boiling point will increase, right? So falling increase as well. So the normal boiling point will increase as the molecules are more stuck together as they're more stuck together, right, it's gonna be harder for them to separate from one another. If they're really stuck together, it's gonna to be hard for them to separate from one another um, and turn into a gas. Next is the vapor pressure of the liquid. So when I think about vapor pressure, so I'm just gonna put some liquid down onto a watch glass. Let's say that this is the liquid, this is the watch glass. And let's say that this one over here has a very low vapor pressure. And this one over here has a very high vapor pressure. We've got a lot of vapor coming up off of that. So in terms of intermolecular forces, I'm gonna say that this one has higher intermolecular forces and therefore lower vapor pressure. This one over here has a higher vapor pressure, therefore it's gonna have lower intermolecular forces. So as I increase the intermolecular forces, the vapor pressure is actually gonna decrease. The vapor pressure should decrease, right? So over here, the more stuck together they are, the less likely it is to escape as a vapor. C, the normal melting point. So the melting point and the boiling point, they're gonna be sort of directly related. So if the boiling point goes up, we should just in general think that the, the melting point's gonna go up. It's sort of the same exact concept. Now, if I, we're in a solid, so this, you know, my hands are now in a solid and they might be vibrating back and forth or, or jiggling around a little bit. Now, if I wanna melt it, that's gonna make them so that they're, you know, being more liquidy and moving around like this more. So to do that, to go from this solid, right, to a liquid, I'm gonna to have to break some of those intermolecular forces a little bit so that they can start moving around more. So if they're more stuck together, then that you know melting point is gonna go up. It's gonna be harder to do that. So that will also increase, so just like the boiling point. Now, the value of delta H of vaporization, so this is again um, related to the vapor pressure, I think, but also we should just think about it in terms of what's happening when I, when I vaporize something. When I go from liquid to gas, that takes a certain amount of energy, and that amount of energy is gonna be directly related to how stuck together they are again. So again, if I wanna go from a liquid to a gas, if it's really stuck together, it's gonna to take a lot more energy to do that. So if it takes, you know, if they're more stuck together, that means the intermolecular forces are increased, then the value of delta H of vaporization would also be increased. When you're looking at these problems, I don't want you just to say, oh, that's the right answer and, and remember the right answer. Right? I want you to be able to logically think through why is that the right answer? And that's what your goal should be. So if you have any questions about these, you can definitely let me know um, and I'll try to, to clear them up a little bit more. Number two, substance A is very soluble in water. So if it's very soluble in water right away, I'm thinking that substance A is probably a polar molecule. Water is very polar, it's our sort of prototypical polar solvent. So A, if it's very soluble water, that means it's polar. Substance B is not soluble in water at all. So right away, again, I'm gonna think, substance C is probably non-polar. If it's polar, I would expect it to dissolve. If it doesn't dissolve in, in water at all, it's probably non-polar. So let's use those, you know, that information to, to sort of do the rest of these, you know, answer these questions. Which of the following predictions can we make? Substance B will be more soluble in hexane than substance A. So hexane is a non-polar solvent. It's a stereotypical non-polar solvent. And I'm gonna say that, yeah, I do suspect substance B would be more polar, excuse me, substance B would be more soluble in hexanes because it's non-polar, right? Substance A is a polar molecule. Um, so that's probably one of the, the two answers. 
substance A will be more soluble in hexane than substance B. Nope, I do not think that. Uh, a is going to be more polar than B because it dissolves in water, so I do not expect that to be the case. The molecules of substance A are more polar than those of substance B. I like that one as well, right? We said that this one's probably polar, it dissolves in water. This one's probably non-polar because it doesn't dissolve in water. And then D is just the opposite of that, so that's not going to be the answer there. So A and C for question number two. For question number three, which of the following substances may exhibit hydrogen bonding with water? So let's remember our, our requirements for that hydrogen bond. We're going to need to have an X element bonded to hydrogen, and X equals O, N, or F. And then I will have that hydrogen bonding interaction between that hydrogen that's bonded to O, N, or F, and then a lone pair of electrons on another X-type atom. So over here, I've got CH3Cl. And this chlorine cannot be part of the X. This hydrogen cannot be part of this. So this CH3Cl cannot participate in hydrogen bonding with water. So let's think about water molecule for, for a second real quick. A water molecule looks like this. So a water molecule can hydrogen bond through this hydrogen here, right? This could be the, the XH here. So this could hydrogen bond to you know, uh, another oxygen on another water molecule, the lone pair of electrons there. So that would be one sort of hydrogen bonding interaction. And then from this oxygen, I could also have a hydrogen bonding interaction to say a hydrogen on another water molecule. So water's really good at building these hydrogen bonding sort of networks. Both of these would be valid hydrogen bonds. Um, wherever I have this dotted line, right, that represents my hydrogen bond. So let's look at NH4+, plus. NH4+, plus, we have an overall positive charge. So technically, this NH could be this XH, and then I would have my water molecule here with a lone pair of electrons. So this is a hydrogen bond. I can form a hydrogen bond here. Now, I don't really like using NH4 here because really this would be an ion-dipole interaction because NH4 plus is an ion. But technically speaking, um, this is a hydrogen bonding interaction. It, it can participate in that. Um, so that's why it's why it's here. Uh, I do want to illustrate though that NH4 could not form hydrogen bonds with itself. And I say with itself because I do not have a lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen. So this nitrogen does not have that lone pair of electrons. It cannot act as this X with a lone pair of electrons. The next one is a CH3OCH3. So the Lewis structure for that, I'll just draw it over here. CH3O. CH3, I've got a lone pair of electrons on that oxygen. So that lone pair of electrons could hydrogen bond with a hydrogen on water. So this right here, that would be a, a valid hydrogen bonding interaction. So C is also valid. The last one, C2, CH2F2. So let's draw that right here. CH2F2. So these fluorines they have a lone pair of electrons on them. They count, right, as this X with a lone pair of electrons. They could hydrogen bond with the hydrogen on water. So this right here, that would be a hydrogen bonding interaction. That's a valid, you know, follows our, our rules here. So D would also be a correct answer here. So this is one way to look at this question. Another way to look at this question would be, which of these would hydrogen, can form hydrogen bonds with itself? And none of these can form hydrogen bonds with themselves. Um, we, we don't have any single molecule that could form a hydrogen bonding interaction according to our rules with itself. Um, but they can form hydrogen bonds with water. So just a, a little thing to keep in mind there. And again, for this number four, this, this is a great question. Um, and I have another video for that uh, already made.